and so we are delighted that you are worshiping with us, whether in person or at home. It is lovely that we have this chance to kind of pause, to pray together, and to begin our journey towards Christmas as we move through each Sunday in Advent, each theme, each, um, each kind of thing to pause and reflect on. So, we are going to begin. So if you'd like to do that, I'll do the reading part and do the play the choir part. Excellent. The Gospel of John speaks of Christ as the true light coming into the world. In commemoration of that coming, we light candles for the four weeks leading to Christmas and reflect on the coming of Christ. Just hold, yep. Yeah. It is significant that the church has always used that language, the coming of Christ, because it speaks to a deep truth. Christ is coming. Christ is always coming, always entering a troubled world, a wounded heart. And so we light the first candle, the candle of hope, and dare to express our longing for peace, for healing, and the well-being of all creation. So together we pray, loving God, as we enter this Advent season, we open all the dark places in our lives and memories to the healing light of Christ. Show us the creative power of hope, prepare our hearts to be transformed by you, that we may walk in the light of Christ. Amen. Take time in the busyness of this season for quiet reflection, for the light of God's love is discernible everywhere. We will let ourselves into surprise by wonder and set aside time to offer quiet thanks. The good news of Advent is this. Christ is coming. Christ is always coming. We will welcome Christ into our hearts. We will let ourselves be guided by his ministry. We will go forth from this place in hope. started Advent today, and um, for a lot of the families that are connected to our church, they have already begun this journey last week with the building of an Advent wreath through their Advent boxes that they received. And today, they're doing activities around our theme of hope. So, what does hope mean? Hope can mean something that we would look forward to something that we wish would be different, something that um, we want for the future. So I'm wondering, what are you hoping for for next year, for 2021? What are you hoping for, if you would tell me? Back to normal. Back to normal? Is that, that basically sums up everybody's hopes for for 2021, I'm sure that that would be pretty consistent. Um, so I'm asking today for our families and our children at home to think about what they're hopeful for for next year. Because often when we think about hope, we often form that into a prayer, right? So when we pray to God, we often give thanks for what God has provided for us. We um, we ask God to be with people that we know need God's presence. And we also ask for the things that we're hopeful for. So um, as we work through the theme of hope today, I was hoping that our families at home and our children would think about what they are most hopeful for for next year and write it on a little slip of paper. And for those who don't have the Advent boxes, there are, at the dollar store, and I can provide this to you if you'd like, um, little clear plastic ornaments that you could roll that piece of paper, stick it in, hang it on your tree, and it would be a prayer to God for um, the coming year. So we're praying for what we're most hopeful for um, and sending that out along with our Christmas journey. Remaining as you are, I invite you to join with me as we offer a prayer for today. Stir up your power, Lord Jesus Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, save us from the threatening dangers of our sins, and enlighten our walk in the way of your salvation. For you live 
A reading from the book of Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like the one who was unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're offering a portion of Psalm 80 this morning. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock, shine forth, you that are not drowned upon the cheerful. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry despite the prayers of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the bridge of our neighbors, and our enemies is ours to soar. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you please stand? The Lord be with you. Also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Lord, to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
Jesus said, Jesus said, in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers of the heaven will be shaken. Then they will see that the Son of Man is coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and put forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that hour or day, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, only the Father. Be aware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight or at cock crow or at dawn or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Would you please be seated? the joy we needed to be able to, to, to find a way to kind of set this apart from all the other sun, all the other weeks. And so yes, it's a little bit early. I'm afraid I may have lost the battle. I'm not going to be allowed to decorate late probably ever again because we've done it this early two years in a row now. But as I said, we needed to do things differently this year. We needed to see this beauty. We needed to set this time and this space apart. I will draw the line. The Christmas lights aren't going on yet. That's the line. Not a very big line, but but as I said, but and then we've done things differently at home. It's quite lovely to see how many people have already decorated trees, have already uh, put on their Christmas lights outside, have decorated their yards. Because I think we need to kind of celebrate what Advent is all about. It's about a time of preparation. It's about getting ready. And how we get ready this year is going to look different. And so why don't we lean into the things that we can do? So we have decorated early. We are. Um, I know we've done that in our homes as well. Um, the, there's a letter going out today. If you're here in person, you picked it up this morning. If not, it'll be mailed tomorrow. And there's a chance for us to kind of set this time apart. There are lots of things we can't do. But what about us paying attention to the things that we can do? We can use this time of preparation to focus each week on the word and the candle that we're lighting. 
So for this week, the first candle is hope. So how do we spend the week looking for signs of hope? Recognizing where we have that little bit of hope, kind of building on the activity that our families are doing at home. But instead of focusing on the COVID numbers of new diagnosis, which are getting scarier every day, or the fact that, you know, our hands are like cracking from the hand sanitizer in the cold, instead of focusing on some of that, why don't we focus on where God is at work and where we find hope? And so maybe it means you send your Christmas cards a little earlier than you normally do. Maybe you've already started your Christmas baking. Maybe, I know there are some people in this room, not to name names, Barb, but who already have their Christmas gifts purchased and wrapped. Whatever we need to do this year to kind of lean into that message of hope, I think we need to take full advantage. There's no denying that things are going to be different this year. And so why don't we find a way to make them different but meaningful? So, for example, normally on the first Saturday in December, we would have our big Christmas turkey dinner. We would shoehorn in as many people as the fire department would let us into that hall, and we would spend time laughing and enjoying our, each other's company, and we would have this beautiful turkey dinner as a parish family. Well, we can't do that for lots of reasons. You can't have that many people in a room. You can't serve people food. There's lots of things we can't do. So instead, we're going to have a take-home festive dinner. And so towards a little closer to Christmas, on the week before Christmas, there's going to be an opportunity for you to purchase a ham and skull potato. Just practically, that's a little easier to pack in a bag and send it home than it is gravy and turkey and all the fixings. And so there'll be a night when we all kind of, we place an order, we come and we pick up our dinner and then we go home. It'll be warm when you go home and so we'll be able to go home and have a warm dinner and to be able to enjoy a little Advent, a little Christmas play. There is a mischief afoot behind the scenes and there will be a special video that we can all watch together when you go home and have your dinner. Something different. It's maybe not quite the same as when we gather and have lots of commotion and lots of noise and lots of fun, but it'll still be a way for us to celebrate together, to do something special, set apart together. Even if it's separately, we're still doing it together because we're all picking up dinner, we're all watching the play, we're all kind of doing that together. And so we need to, as I said, continue to kind of lean into those things that we can do. We have done a beautiful job in raising funds to support a family through community care this year at Christmas, and so we were able to still find a way to, to make sure that somebody else had a little bit of hope and a little bit of good news in their life. We have a way to continue to support our community lunches here. There are lots of things that we still can do. The Christmas letter that's going home includes some of the services and some of the activities that we're going to carefully try and do this year. It also includes some things you can do at home. So there's a little calendar of things, of things you can think about or activities you can do every day. There are suggestions of some of the spiritual disciplines that you can try. There is um, one of the suggestions that somebody uh, offered was read the Gospel of Luke through the month of December. So that on December the 1st, you start with chapter 1, and each day you read a chapter. So that that gets our hearts and our minds and our lives ready, because we have reread the whole, the whole story of Jesus, from his birth to his death and his resurrection. And so by reading a piece of that story each day, it gets us ready to receive that gift of love on Christmas Day. Simple things, but meaningful things. And there may be new family traditions you're going to have to think about this year. We can't have the usual gather the whole crowd in someone's house around the table. So how are we going to do things to celebrate Christmas, to celebrate Advent, and to share that with the people that we love? I sent a care package out early to Winnipeg. Todd got a parcel in the mail this week that had some of the Christmas decorations so that he can decorate his tree with some of the stuff that we used to use on our tree here at home. I didn't tell him, he was quite surprised to get this little, little package. Not too many, and none of the breakable. I kept the breakable ones at my house. But it was a little thing, it was something different. Any other year he would have come home, so I would have not sent him the ornaments. I would have had the kid home instead. But that's not what's happening this year, and so how do we find ways to make that meaningful? How do we find ways to share some of that love, some of that joy, some of that hope that the Christ child is bringing? How do we find glimpses of that in the midst of this, these next couple of weeks? 
And they don't have all the answers because it's going to look different for each of us and some days it's going to be easier than others. I can stand here and talk about hope because I know I did something special and that Todd really got a kick out of getting these Christmas ornaments. Three days from now I'm going to probably be a little puddle on the floor because my baby's not coming home for Christmas. And we're all going to have days like that. Some days it's going to be easier to celebrate Advent. It's going to be easy to find ways to anticipate and to get excited. In other days, it's going to be hard. And that's okay too, because again, this year looks very different. And so how do we find ways to keep our eyes and our, more importantly, our hearts focused on the coming of Jesus, on the coming of the Christ child? And that's going to look different for each of you. And so maybe it means you lean into your Christmas decorating and you put some of that stuff up a little bit earlier. Or maybe this is the year that you leave it packed away. Maybe this is the year you send Christmas cards. Be a little more intentional about sending Christmas cards. Maybe you haven't done it for a while. We can help you with some of those addresses if you'd like. But maybe it's a way to kind of find ways to share a little bit of that hope and a little bit of that joy with each other in little ways. Because I know it's certainly nice to go to the mailbox and receive one. And it also feel good to offer a little message and a little note and to let someone know what you're thinking about them. That you miss spending time, you miss spending doing some of the things that we used to do together. So how do we find other ways to, to have a meaningful walk through Advent? Some of the lovely traditions we're not going to be doing. We're not having a lessons and carol service when you can't sing in church. You do not want to listen to me sing nine Christmas carols at you while you sit there and not sing along. That's the hard part, is the not sing along. So there's going to be opportunities for us to enjoy that differently this year. The St. Catherine's Civic Christmas Service, uh, Christmas Carol Service, which is normally about the second Tuesday, which is a big fundraiser and event for community care, is being recorded over these next couple of days so that they've asked each group to come in one at a time. So there'll still be a message and the carols and the community, the Niagara Symphony Orchestra has got a small group that is coming to perform and a small choir is scattered to perform. It'll look a little different, but we can all still participate by watching that when it comes online. We can't do our own line lessons in carol service, but the uh, St. John's and Laura is putting one on and is offering it to the whole domicis. And so a little bit later in December, I'll share you some of the links for that so that we can watch them do it and we can participate. And then you can sing to your heart's delight at home. Nobody will hear whether you're in tune or not. That's my favorite part. But we can still find ways to make it meaningful. And like our gospel reading says, we need to pay attention, we need to keep away, we need to be ready. Well, this year that's going to look a little different. And some things might be easier to figure out, and some things are going to be a little bit harder. And that's okay. This is not a year like any other. And so we'll do our best to find ways to focus on the hope that the first candle offers us, just like we'll focus on the peace. Peace or love? What's next week? Peace. It is peace. Ha! See, I was right. We'll focus on the peace. How do we find that in our lives? How do we recognize that? How do we thank God for all of that? Each week, we can focus on something different. We can acknowledge that, that it's going to look different this year and find ways to make it meaningful and special in its own way. We can also spend a little time reflecting on what we've done in the years past and looking forward to things we might be able to do again next year. What we're letting us setting aside this year isn't forever. It just, this year is different. And so we kind of embrace that. We do our best to find new ways to celebrate that. Because we need to be ready. Because like it or not, ready or not, Christmas is coming. And the gift of the Christ child is coming. And so we have this time of Advent. We hear the stories of what the prophets have foretold. We hear that next week we'll start to hear about John the Baptizer, baptizer and yelling at everybody that repent, stand by the river in his dirty clothes. We'll hear of Gabriel coming to see Mary. We're even going to try and see if we can figure out a way to do an in-your-seat Christmas pageant for the Sunday before Christmas. We're still working on that. But there's still ways that we can find the joy in this season. We can still find ways to anticipate what is coming next. We can still find ways to kind of lean into the gift of the Christ child and to ready our hearts and to ready our lives to receive that. So that our anticipation as we light a candle each Sunday as we kind of spend time focusing on the hope, the peace, the joy, and the love that this season brings, so that we can be ready to receive this wonderful gift 
We can once again be reminded of how God has been at work and God has fulfilled promises of a Messiah coming. And we get to hear the prophets that they proclaim and we get to hear the story unfold. And we get to be excited. And we get to kind of fill our hearts with anticipation. Because the whole point of this is about getting ready for the birth of the Christ child. For being reminded how God is at work in the world around us, how God has acted through our history, and that this incredible gift of love that is still making a difference in the world these thousands of years later, that that gift of love still comes to us. We still celebrate it, we still rejoice, we still kind of we celebrate it, but that it still continues to touch and to change the world. And so we need to do our best to get ready to welcome it, get our hearts and our lives ready to receive it. Because it is about God's gift of love to the world and God's gift of love to us. And so we need to be ready to celebrate it. Amen. I invite you to stand, and together we'll make our affirmation of faith. We believe in a bright and amazing God, who has been to the depths of despair on our behalf, who has risen in splendor and majesty, who decorates the universe with sparkling water, clear white light, twinkling stars, and sharp colors over and over again. We believe that Jesus is the light of the world, that God believes in us and trusts us even when we make the same mistakes over and over again. We commit ourselves to Jesus, to one another as brothers and sisters, and to the Maker's business in the world over and over again. God said, let there be light. We say, we will be the light. Amen. God of power and might, tear open the heavens and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. We pray for the ministry we share in Christ's name. Open our hearts to your call for justice, peace, and healing. Attune us to the needs of the world as you draw near. Hear us, O oh God. We pray for this planet in need of restoration, for devastated habitats, polluted waters, thawing ice, blazing fires, swelling floods, and long-lasting droughts. Renew the face of the earth and our relationship to it. Hear us, O God. We pray for all people who care for others in our community and around the world. Fill them with compassion and the power to respond with justice for those who are oppressed, with welcome for those who are excluded, and with relief for those who suffer. Hear us, O oh God. Your 
We pray for people who are in crisis as the seasons change, for those without homes facing severe winter, for those who are unemployed or underemployed, and for those in poverty or facing food insecurity. We pray today for the work of community care, the St. George's Breakfast Program, and our only own community lunch program. Relieve our burdens, sustain their bodies, and ease their minds. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the people in our families and congregation who live with depression, anxiety, chronic pain, addiction, and other invisible illnesses. Ease their suffering and support them when they struggle. Hear us, O oh God. We give thanks for the lives and witness of those who died while waiting for justice, peace of, or healing, those whose names we know and those whose names are, our own, are known only to you. Sustain all who still yearn for the completion of your redeeming work. Hear us, O oh God. And receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Confession lets us set down the heavy things we carry with us, putting us in right relationship with one another and with God. For all that separates our hearts from God and from all that closes our eyes to God's love. For what we have done, left undone, and what has been done on our behalf. For the pride that prevents us from forgiving others as we have been forgiven. Jesus, forgive us, create in us clean hearts of God, and renew a bright spirit within us. The Lord enrich you with grace and nourish you with many blessings. The Lord defend you in trouble and keep you from all evil. The Lord accepts your prayers and absolves you from your offenses for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, may the peace of the Lord be always with you.
prayer over the gifts. God of love and power, your word stirs within us the expectation of your coming of your Son. Accept all we offer you this day and sustain us with your promise of eternal life. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places, our true and loving God. Through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high, by whom you created all things. You laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the seas when it burst from the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, Holy One of Blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so as the morning stars sing your praises, we join with the heavenly beings and all creation as we shout for joy. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Glory and honor are yours, creator of all. Your word has never been silent. You call a people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your reign, and give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take heed, this is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took a cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends, and said, Drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so remembering all that was done for us, cross, the tomb, the resurrection, and ascension, longing for Christ's coming in glory, and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ, and in the fullness of time, gather us with all your people into the joy of our true eternal home. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and Creator, in the voices of unending praise. Blessed are you now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours, now and forever. Amen. God of promise, you prepare a banquet for us in your kingdom. Amen. 
the gifts of God for the people of God. I invite this side of the church to come forward to receive communion first, followed by this side.
Just a couple of quick announcements. Uh, a word of sincere word of appreciation for everybody who came and decorated the church. Really does look beautiful. Um, and, and it took a lot longer. Like, I have to admit, the let's do a Saturday morning an hour and everybody who shows up who wants to is a much easier way of doing this than trying to schedule it over several days to make sure that there weren't too many people in the space at the same time. But it was worth it because, as I said, it does look very beautiful. And so thank you to everybody who came and worked so hard and so carefully um, to do all of this. As I said, it's, it's um, quite a lot <coughs> to see the church looking so beautiful. Um, the letter, please make sure you take your letter home. If you weren't here to pick it up in person or have somebody drop it in your mailbox on the way home, they will be mailed tomorrow. And it has um, <coughs> some suggestions of things you can do to, to kind of mark Advent at home. It has an outline of some of the services that we'll be offering, um, many of which have an option to watch a live stream or to be recorded for you to watch afterwards, and some of the special events that we are kind of carefully participating and celebrating in, like for example, our take home meal with our uh, Christmas play, uh, Christmas uh, video for that. So, as I said, um, we, I give you this, this list of things knowing that we may have to adapt or adjust depending on what happens in the world around us, but that's kind of our hope for how we journey through Advent. And so please take, make sure you read that letter, find some of the dates and activities, and if you need more information, don't hesitate to call the office. Um, thank you to everybody who was so generous in their support. We collected just shy of $800 to help kind of make Christmas special for a family in our community. And so the Christmas elves are working hard to put that all together so that we can take that to community care in a little while. So thank you very much for all of that. Um, a reminder as well, I'm going to be away for a couple of days this week, just not going anywhere. I'm cleaning my house and having a nap, you know, that kind of exciting vacation stuff that has to happen, especially the cleaning my house part. Um, and so uh, if anything comes up, please contact the wardens. So they'll be able to kind of connect you to what's going on in the community. So. Um, as I said, I'll be back for next Sunday, but um, Nicole's in the office for her usual time. Call her. She usually has a better sense of what's going on than I do anyway. Um, but as I said, I will be back um, kind of on, the, on duty next weekend as well. So I'm just taking a couple of days. If you need anything, um, Nicole is in the office Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday mornings. Um, and so, you know, give her a quick call if there's things you need to pick up, if there's resources you need, if you have any questions about how to register for some of these things how to participate in some of the upcoming events, um, contact her, she can answer a lot of those questions. Um, and then there's information about the ham um, and scalp potato dinner as well. Um, again, like the Christmas dinner, there's only so many spots, so many meals we're preparing. So it's better to call early and reserve your takeout to dinner um, for that as well. It gives you the pickup time, it gives you how much it's gonna cost, and as I said, um, just like our Christmas dinner, we're only cooking so many meals because we also need to very carefully plan how people can pick that up. So um, if you haven't, uh, this Saturday, of course, is our, our um, pickup for the meat pies, butter tarts, and frozen soups. I think if you haven't put your order in, I would call Jean today. You can sweep one in. 
Um, but I know that people have responded very beautifully to this, and I know there's going to be another little bee this week to make sure we have enough to distribute next Saturday. So it, when you call um, to place your order, you also need to schedule your pickup time so that we're, um, we're kind of spreading everybody out so that we can bring stuff out to your car. You don't have to come in and that we're doing this carefully. So you'll need to book when you want to come to pick this up and what you need to, to pick up when you come. So um, I would say if you haven't called, haven't put your order in yet, do it today so that we can make sure we have what we need. Feels like I'm missing something, but I can't think of anything else. We've got the advent, we've got the dinner. I'll think about it five minutes after the service. Um, but again, the other important thing to remember too is we do send a lot of emails from the office. Most of them are from me saying, don't forget the Zoom coffee hour, here's the link, here's the stuff for the service. But for a lot of the facts and information, we try and keep that in the church life email that comes out on Wednesday afternoons. So if that's the only email you open from us, please open that one. As I said, that has information about anything upcoming, registration information, how to access some of the stuff that's going on. So if you can only open one email a week from us, ignore mine, and watch the one from Nicole that comes out of the church office. Because as I said, that has a lot of information in that. And it's always a good place to refer back to for information as well. So I think that's everything. It was lovely that we had this chance to worship together. We had this time to set apart to pray together, whether in person or at home. And I hope that the rest of your uh, week in Advent as we focus on hope is meaningful and uh, that you find some joy in all of that as well. So I'm going to, just to mix it up, I'm going to bite this side to leave first, followed by this side. And remember, we go back, start at the back of the church, towards the front. Perfect. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.